Taking cuttings of plants is a great way to ensure that you get a replica, an exact replica of the plant from which you're propagating. And while people might feel confident and quite happy in taking cuttings from introduced plants like roses and geraniums and herbs, they're not quite so confident in taking cuttings from native plants. But don't worry, I'm going to take a few cuttings of different native plants and show you how it's done. I'm just going to take a little bit of this Coria. I just want to take a bit of salt bush and then a little bit of Grevillea as well. There's a myth that some native plants are fuss pots when it comes to taking cuttings, and some surely are. But there's some really reliable ones that you can take and it's dead easy. Things like bottle brushes, the calistamins, the coastal rosemary, westringia, and of course, corias. You should always sort of go like that and just bend it over and make sure that it springs back. If it doesn't spring back and it wilts over, you'll find that that cutting will take a long time to grow, if at all. So here we go. This is how you take an ordinary old tip cutting. You snip the top of it off and I'm going to leave four or five leaves at the top. You take some of those leaves off down the bottom and take them as close as you can to the, to the stem without damaging the stem. And you'll notice that I've cut just below where those leaves joined onto the stem. So just snip below there because that's where it's going to callus up and that's where the roots are going to happen. So there's your perfect little tip cutting. I'll put that in later. And this makes another cutting. That's called an internodal cutting because those areas where the leaves are joined onto the stem are nodes. So there's a node there, there's a node there, and there's a node there. And if I cut just below them, there's an internodal cutting and that one will grow pretty well too. Take off any flowers that you see because they're using too much energy, taking it away from the root development. If you can put about three or four nodes to each cutting, you're doing very well. Now for the Rigodia. The old man's salt bush is a beauty, but I can see that this one is actually wilting a little bit, just like that. No good. Take it out, let that tip just be a bit of rubbish, and use this firmer, sturdier bit. And it's got quite a lot of nodes, so you can cut it down to about, oh, 10 centimetres, even a bit longer. Snip those leaves off, because they're going to be under the medium. And then take that off, and you've got a pretty, pretty good cutting there. No problem. These salt bushes, or the Rigodias, and the Corias make really good hedges. So if you take cutting material, you can expect to get a replica of those plants and you'll need a lot of material because hedges, you know, you make a hedge and you use a lot of plants to make a decent hedge. But by doing it this way, it's really economical. When you're taking any cuttings, never use diseased plants. And of course, make sure that your secateurs are nice and sharp so that you cut through it very finely. Right, grevilleas are notoriously difficult to grow from cuttings, but they don't need to be. I'm going to show you a trick of using a little bit of the new wood and a little bit of the old wood. It's called a heel cutting. You've got a main stem going down here and then a side shoot coming off here. So what I'm going to do is pull that down like that and you can see that this shoot here has now got it's got a little piece of old wood from the main stem and the nice new growth up here. It's called a heel cutting. It looks like the heel of your shoe. And if you just trim that up so it's nice and neat, the beauty of doing it that way is that you've got more cambium area, so there's more growth hormone in there to form roots. The medium that you put them into, you can use trays or pots. I've got pots. This is seed raising mix that works quite well, but I'm going to use this, it's coir peat or coconut fibre. It's very moist and those cuttings can go straight into there. Some people use the rooting hormone powder. I like to use a bit of honey, just dob the bottom of the stem into the honey. It's an antibacterial. And then using your dibbing stick, an old chopstick or something like that, and just make the cutting into the hole and away you go. Make the hole deep enough so that you can bury the cutting up to about two 
of those nodes deep. Now you do the same with the Rigodias. And the Grevilleas. Keep them moist and I put them into a polystyrene box so they're all in together, easy to look after. And in about six to eight weeks, you'll have a lovely lot of roots, probably coming out the drainage holes down here, and that's the time to transplant them. You'll have plenty of new individual plants of the Corias and the Rigodias to form a hedge, and it's just a lovely thing to do. The Danish people and all of Scandinavia have a word for being cosy and warm and sort of comfortable in what you're doing. It's called huga. And I like that word because this makes me feel really cosy and comfortable. That's what gardening's all about.